Natalia Sokolova, managing partner of the SGG World Sokol family office, is a business strategist and investor who focuses on high impact tech opportunities. Two areas she is currently interested in are blockchain technology and gamification of the world. Natalia has a very eclectic background from wheelchair to playboy playmate and supermodel to successful <laughs> entrepreneur. She's using her experience to identify companies that have a potential of making the most impact on the world. And she joins us today on Biz One on One to tell us the story of her life and career and also what SGG World specializes in. Welcome, Natalia. Thank you, Randy. Thanks I for having me here. Our first Playboy Playmate <laughs> on uh, Biz One on One, and that is really a small part of your life oh, yeah. story, but how does, how do you, how do you, I, I need to know. Okay. Run, run me through it. Um, yeah, like the word eclectic actually is a great description for my life because I was born in uh, Moscow and I came from the oldest living noble family in Russia. And uh, my family was, you know, in a pretty high circles. So by the time that the Soviet Union fell down, my father and his brother were able to uh, do a lot of government contracts. So fast forward a few years, you know, my father lived in, actually had a Swiss citizen. Uh, they created a family office that focused on construction development, natural resource sector. So the whole concept was when the uh, Soviet Union fell down, uh, I was one of the first uh, programs participants that between Moscow State University and U.S. universities. So at 15 years old, I won Moscow State University contest and one of the very, very few first kids to leave Moscow to go study in the United States. What year was that? That was, I won the contest in 92. So and right around the time that yeah, exactly. uh, the, the wall First was Wisconsin. coming down? Wow. Yeah, so I was uh, very interesting, fortunate enough, and enough, I can imagine at 16, traveling by yourself to a different country was pretty scary. So, but the idea was to, for me to graduate university and go back and work with the family office. Uh, but um, after, you know, as soon as I got to university, it's uh, a week up to my 17th birthday, I, um, I got in a horrific car accident. So doctors gave me three days to live, and uh, absolute best case scenario was the wheelchair for me. And when you go through something like that, you know, being alone in a different country, my mom, of course, flew as soon as she could. You know, she was there a couple, less than a week after, probably. Uh, it's a very, very scary experience. And um, it's really, um, changes your life to a complete different direction because you look at everything from a totally different perspective. So whatever plans you have or you had, they're not existent anymore. So, you know, it's always a great saying, you know, tell God about your plans, you know, to make him laugh. So really it was the case for me because I was supposed to be on a tennis scholarship, playing sports, you know, graduating. Um, I studied finance and national business. So um, instead, I ended up uh, having to go back to Russia for a year of physical therapy, came back, graduated from the uh, University of Maryland in three years with top 2% top, top two of my class. But hold on, you skipped over something there. You were supposed to be in a wheelchair, best case scenario. What happened? Um, Miracle? Yeah, well, that's, that's exactly what I was going to go. Thanks for putting it out. Um, yes, because, well, I don't, miracle is one way to put it. It's, I think it's... Uh, um, you know, like, like Napoleon, Napoleon Hill, Think and Grow Rich book, uh, like he says, if you really have a really strong desire to accomplish something, you really focus on it, you see it happening, and you create a mastermind. This kid was mastermind with my mom, and you look it th through it and push it through. You can, you can achieve anything. There's no limitation on what you can achieve in your life. It's all here, here, and believing and having faith in things. So you decided you were going to walk. Uh, for me, it was, or I'm having a normal life to the best point I can have it, or I'm just not going to live if I'm not going to get up wow. and walk. So and I was very black and white. <laughs> and uh, my perseverance and my mom's help, it's like we both really pushed it through. And I think that what got me out of the wheelchair in the first place. So how quickly did you, were, you said you were back, a year of physiotherapy and then you were back to the U.S. Well, and were you walking then? Um, well, if, 
how quickly is a, is a hard thing to say because you know it's the recovery is still going on. Once you have a nerve damage, there are certain things that always stay with you. But I was um, in a wheelchair in a full body cast for about six months, tied to a bed for about two months in the hospital. <laughs> but um, you know every single thing that you can look at it as a curse or you can look at it as a blessing. So instead of crying over like why why did it happen to me, I took it as an opportunity to. You know, if I were almost died and uh, I was given a second chance not only to live, but to create, to still graduate, to, um, you know, to come from a very good family, uh, I really have a specific purpose in the world. And instead of just uh, being, okay, what I need to do to go back to my family, to run the business, it actually, my whole mentality switched what I, why I'm here. Why, why I'm alive and what can I do with that knowledge and information. So from that on, um, Playboy kind of came um, in a way by chance because um, I was, um, uh, just to prove myself I could walk uh, because to, to I could actually mentally overcome it. You know, so, you know I couldn't really wear heels. Um, I had a chance to enter in the number one bikini contest in the world. So that was my challenge. If I can walk that stage with 200,000 contestants compete to be on the finals and I was on the finals, I mentally overcame my accident. That was already, you know, last month before my graduation from university. Wow. So even, so even <laughs> to enter the bikini contest and like all the other women that were entering, you had a little bit different perspective. I didn't care it. about winning or anything. I just cared about mentally walking through the stage knowing that I can fall any second because I had no balance and I could not wear heels. Wow. <laughs> Even becoming a Playboy Playmate and being in the magazine and mm -hmm. all of what comes with that, that was even more of an, of an achievement for you yeah. based on... I think that, you know, like when you look back, say why, you know, why this opportunity was presented, I didn't know what Playboy was. I arrived at the Playboy Mansion uh, at the um, day of the Playmate of the Year Awards and uh, security comes to me and is like, well, you know, half has wanted you to join to the Playmate of the Year party. I was like, really? And who's half? <laughs> That's how clueless I was <laughs> when I got there. I was totally you know, a girl from a noble family, just focusing on survival and school and business. And now, for some reason, uh, I was literally thrown there because um, I was supposed to be uh, in financial area, but I couldn't get my work visa through finan finance because you have to prove that I'm Amer no American are qualified. Uh, the news from my attorney come when I'm in the mansion. And just say, okay, well, like, we'll sponsor your work visa. So that's so how I got Playboy my, got your work visa. Playboy got my work visa, and then another modeling agency, and I got my green card and then passport as an extraordinary talent in modeling. <laughs> wow. Go figure, right? So that was why I kind of did it. But um, I think that um, uh, looking back at everything from where I stand right now, it's given me experience because I see so many women uh, struggling between you know, being a woman, trying to be in a business that where it really a man's world and a man's business. Uh, and uh, also, you know, especially if they're trying to, okay, can, can I have a family? Can I have a children if I'm already being a woman in a man's place? So I think my experience, you know, I'm a single mom of two gorgeous boys. Uh, I'm very blessed. And um, I'm an entrepreneur. I run companies. I, have, uh, I invest in companies. I do strategic planning. I help the world, and at still time, I am a mom, and I am a former model, and that um, uh, I think that I'm, my goal here is to really in, empower a lot of women, especially who are single moms, and say, you know, there's no, nothing thing that's not possible. Everything you put your mind and your heart to, if you really truly believe in yourself, it's absolutely possible. Wow. That is quite a story. <laughs> so <laughs> I, that's, uh, I can imagine. I'd love to hear the long version someday. And uh, maybe there'll be the uh, Natalia Sokolova movie about, yeah. about your whole story. But today, you, I noticed you, it, in, your, in our intro, we talked about gamification of the world. Mm -hmm. What are you talking about? So um, let me like, what's interesting, so uh, using Playboy model, you know, then going to blockchain, gamification, media, such an opposite things, you know, what a possible connection can be. But if you dig deeper, uh, let's take Playboy, for example. Playboy is a lifestyle brand. Playboy is about um, culture, about art, about you know music, jazz festival, jazz festival. 
Uh, it's, uh, you know, half was able to create a total revolution. He's got the best politician coming. So it was a complete brand around lifestyle. And uh, sexuality and the beauty, of women's beauty was a part of it. But it was always very tasteful and very peaceful and very artistic. So, and if you take that concept and you say, to, okay, let's talk about gamification. So what is um, gamification, first of all? Right now, uh, all the companies, um, they're trying to get customers or try to, it's all about, about, about interaction of companies, clients, consumers. So how do you do in the very high-paced uh, society when we all have this tons of screen about and things are blinking every second, why we pay attention to this or this? What is the customer engagement operation? Why is happening? So obviously, if we know why certain things is doing better than the other, you know, the, the, that person will be uh, ruling the world. But you can, uh, for instance, let's say um, there's 2.6 billion people playing ga games daily. That's a huge number. So if you start from that number, say why do they play? So the game Fortnite was one of the great, is the greatest game, which is the most interaction. Uh, a week ago, you have uh, Ace creating Apex Legends. Then in a day, it it does what uh, Fortnite did in four months. So what is that creates, and why people? look at that and not that. So that is very hard to predict, but what we know is that people do pay attention to new gaming, and it's probably number one way to get somebody's attention. And there's a lot of misconception about gamers as well, because people think it's some kind of kid sitting like in a corner, you know, you know, pizzas everywhere and just, you know, drenching clothes. But realistically, the average life of a gamer is 36 years old. So, um, or you know, early thirties. The average, average gamer, gamer has a family, gamer. has a good, has a business, wow. or has a good income, owns a home, have family, kids. So it's it's totally not what you really think thinking about gaming. Uh, by gamification, everything is being gamified right now. Walmart. Um, you cannot become a manager that just announce it until you've finished the game that Walmart created for all the employees. Oh, a training program Training for problems. Then education, Khan Academy. It's using gaming to yes. get interaction with the kids. Uh, I just read um, there was an instance when, uh, when they're trying to find a cure for cancer and so for doctors to, they need data from the kids. How do we get the kids to write down, okay, my pain level, how I'm feeling? So they created a game, a very interactive game to help kids to put the data and that's actually helped a company to get much closer to finding a solution for cancer. And so I, they, I know you can go for days giving different example. So that's, um, I feel that, um, you know, I come across the company that um, is a WAM network, and what WAM did, what I thought was absolutely amazing that nobody else really did, it's a media company that took, uh, basically presents every single thing that gaming related, lifestyle of gamers, uh, and uh, as an MTV for gaming. So their unofficial uh, slogan is gaming is a force for good. And coming as a mom of a 13-year-old as a gamer and kicking him outside to play games, to not to play games, to play real games, basketball, playing golf, yeah. it's like stop playing video games, understanding that the value of the games and that you cannot just stop one activity versus the other activity, you have to find the balance of the two. So it was a literally good learning experience to me. So combining my Playboy to Wham, which is a lifestyle of gaming, which is the future of how you get the message across, I'm a big believer in that, uh, is giving me a chance to be a part of something that gives me an, a highway to get a message across to 2.6 billion people. Uh, and whatever the message can be, it can be from learning, from engagement, from education. Uh, it's, uh, we're working with uh, different strategic companies, you know, musicians, top, top musicians, they're all gamers working on universal music. Uh, to do a separate red carpet, so they talk about their gaming experiences. So, I mean, there's so much, so I think that everything going on in the world, this is one really big area that can really use a really interesting platform to pass the message through. Also, of course, I look at it as an investor from standpoint of view. Um, rather than uh, investing in esports, how do you know? It's only what, one company win, one team wins out of how many? and you need to put 30 to 50 million into a team, support them. 
you know, this way you have one media company that has a global distribution that can help you to pass the message on, that can help you with your foundation, your charities, uh, like Games for Change, using kids for autism to use the gaming to influence their yes. healing. So I think it's just a really interesting concept. And that's a very long answer to your question. <laughs> <laughs> And uh, we're talking with Natalia Sokolova, the managing partner of Sokol Family Office, former Playboy Playmate. And uh, we're gonna be right back with, uh, with more. Stay with us.